Today, though, I'm only talking to people who have failed, okay? So if you had never failed, if you've never messed up, if you've never jacked it up, then I'm not talking to you. You can go ahead and take a nap, do whatever, whatever it is you do. So uh, if you, though, if you failed, if, if you haven't met an expectation, if you are a loser, if you are someone who has experienced, uh, who has let people down, then uh, I'm gonna be talking with, with us, okay? Uh, we're gonna talk amongst ourselves, so uh, everybody else can just check out for a while, it'll be all right. But if you, if you have started something in your life or thought you were gonna become something in your life and it, and it didn't work out and, and you didn't achieve and you didn't become, then a lot of times I think we carry that, that uh, label, that brand of failure. When I was a kid, man, I, my parents weren't, weren't normal. If you know them, you know what I mean. Go, you know, bless their hearts. <laughs> they, uh, they were by no means uh, normal parents. They were extremely odd. They instilled in me and my brothers that, that we could absolutely do anything. Okay, that we, we could become whatever we wanted to, that we could do anything that we set our minds to do. And, and uh, so, uh, and, and at the same time, in a real weird way, never put any expectation on us, which is, which is weird. Like, I'm not going to love you if you don't live up to your potential. But what happened was, uh, because I was kind of raised that way, I had enormous goals of who I thought I should become and who I thought I was and what I thought I should be doing in my life. And, and so as I went through school, uh, you know, I, I didn't work very hard at it, you know, uh, along with other people in the room. And uh, <laughs> it didn't work real hard at it, you know, but we got by, like they let us out or got us out of there, right? Got rid of us. So we, we made it through school and, and, uh, and, you know, I did all right. I, I did good in school, and um, I, I've always been able to do pretty much whatever, you know, whatever I decided I wanted to do. Um, just, I, I mean, like, for example, uh, I wanted to, I needed to learn to play guitar. So I was like, God, I need to learn to play guitar. So I bought a guitar, and like, was it what, a week later, like two weeks later, we played this worship service at this church. Like, so, I mean, it, it, I've been able, whatever I set my mind to, I've been able to do. Uh, I played baseball. I was good at baseball. Uh, I really just assumed that that's what I would be doing with my life. I didn't really make any other plans outside of that, uh, which is not a good thing to do, you know, <laughs> especially when you really are, are an expert at jacking up all the potential you have. And, uh, and so I, as I, I began to grow and graduated high school, I, I just assumed that everything was going to work out for me because, well, it should have because I deserved it, right? <laughs> and uh, so I started through life and, and, uh, and, you know, I hit college and it, has anybody ever been to college and treated it like high school? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I found? They don't play. Like, it just don't work out like that. They don't just get you out of there, right? So I, I didn't do well. I think my first semester of college, I had a point four zero. Which is not good. I realized that there was a, a reason you needed to go to those classes, that um, I did pass baseball. <coughs> good. That was good. <laughs> you know, it's always great when you do that. Um, no, and, and what I found was that, man, my life wasn't adding up to be what I thought it, it should be. And so I just, you know, I was tired of all of it. And, uh, and I, I started seeing that everything I started, man, I just, it didn't come, if it didn't come easy or didn't just happen, man, I was kind of out. I quit or, or washed out or whatever. I thought it'd be a good idea to go in the Marines. Anybody ever had that idea? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like if things aren't working out, let's join the military. That's got to be good, <laughs> right? 
right? And so we went through that, and uh, there was one good thing about that is you didn't get to quit. <laughs> you had to stay till you finished. So I uh, did that, and, uh, you know, I did all right there. Uh, it's not hard to do all right there, like, if, if you just do what you're told, and then you can kind of get by, and so I did all right. But, but what I started seeing is my life wasn't becoming what, what I really thought it should be. And I, I started looking at all the potential I had in my life, and I can't imagine the frustration in my parents seeing all the potential of what could be and watching it just just get flushed away and if you've been a parent man you know you know how disappointing those stinking kids are no i'm just <laughs> I, I think that that as just as i went through life though man i i had let down my parents and and not by any expectation of theirs but just by not becoming who i could be and uh and they were seeing me really mess my life up. And, and, and I, my life got worse and worse and worse. And it became so much to the point to where it was overwhelming. And, and you set into this, I'm a loser, I'm a, I'm a failure mindset. Like, like, I'm not becoming what I had dreamed I would become when I was in high school and talking to the counselors. And, and man, we're going to go take the world. And we're going we're gonna to be an astronaut and a physicist and a baseball player and a superstar and a rock star and, you know and then it's just like you failed at everything like in your top 10 list that you wanted to be right and then you end up and you're taking a job and you're just working like everybody else and you always thought maybe man there was more that I was supposed to be and and so it kind of sets in like I've failed like I've let down these people who had poured so much into me and there's a story of a guy in the Bible, and he's my favorite guy in the whole Bible because, because I, I feel like we connect in, in so many ways, and his name was Peter. And this guy named Peter, he walked with Jesus. He, he, was, he was one of the apostles. When, when Jesus picked out his, his 12 that he was going to invest into, man, he came and, and he chose this guy, this guy named Peter. And, and he, he, he keeps him in this, not just in the 12, but Peter got to be in the inner circle of the guys who walked with Jesus. Like, there were three guys who walked with Jesus and got to be with him at all times that he let in on deep secrets and details. And, and so Peter walked with Jesus, but more than once, like one time Jesus is talking and Peter corrects him and he turns around and looks at him and says, get behind me, Satan. Now that's got to cut. Like, I mean, there's one thing to be in label loser, but just flat out Satan label, you know, that's, that's got to cut, especially coming from, you know, this is Messiah. This is the anointed chosen one of God. These words are coming from God. Get behind me, Satan. That's got to hurt, right? And then this other time, Peter's like, hey, Jesus, you're walking on the water. I want to walk on the water. Cool, come on, come to me, Jesus. Peter jumps out, and Peter gets to walk on water. But then, man, sure as he does, he starts sinking. And Jesus has to say, he fails at the one thing that was humanly impossible for him to do. He failed at because he just couldn't entrust the call Jesus had on his life. Called him out of the boat. This other time, Jesus is, is being taken, and, and he's being taken by force. This time, the, the army had come for him, and the soldiers had come, and, and they were going to take Jesus. And this is in the, in the last week, and, and when they come, Peter jumps up and takes up arms, man, and he hacks off this soldier's ear. Like he's really aggressive and really passionate and really driven, but also way out ahead of Jesus sometimes. And Jesus has to, like, look at Peter and, and put the guy's ear back on, you know, I don't know. Just, what if he just, like, got it on a little sideways? Like, oh, you're the dude. Jesus put your ear on sideways. I don't recognize you anywhere. You know, I don't know how it worked out. He just, he just did it. The thing was, though, the last night Jesus was with them, though Peter jumps up and he makes a statement. He's like, these other losers... They're going to jack you. They will turn and they will run and they can't handle what's going to happen. But I'm with you. 
I can handle it. I'm going to stick with you, man. I'm not going anywhere, Jesus. No matter what happens, no matter what happens to you, I'm ready to go with you to the death. And Jesus says, look, before, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Before morning, this night, like, I don't even give you 12 hours. Like, this night, you will deny me three times. Now Peter's got to like, after being warned by Jesus, and after seeing everything Jesus had done, you would have to be like, this man might know what he's talking about, right? So here's what I would do, because I think me and Peter, are like, I would be on my guard, like, I'm not going to let that happen. Because if you tell me I'm going to do something, I will be determined that's not what I'm going to do, right? So you got to see, Jesus, Peter's going into this night, man, shields up. Everything tightened. I mean, he's in full focus. Don't deny Jesus. Don't deny Jesus. Don't deny. I mean, he's just like, you, you're not going to get me on this one, man. You got me on the, you got me on the water. You, you got me when, I, when you called me Satan. And you got me when I chopped the guy's ear off. You're not getting me on this one, right? So what happens is the night begins. Jesus is taken away. And some guys come up, and Peter's like by the fire, and they're like, hey, aren't you one of his? And he's like, I never knew the guy. I mean, with shields up, thinking, Jesus just told me, flat out denies him. I don't even know who you're talking about. I've never met him. Then some other people are like, no, no, you're one of them. And he begins to curse him. No way, I've never, I don't know who you're talking about, Jack. Back up. I'm not part of them. Right? Twice, the third time, man, he flat out curses Jesus, denies he's ever had anything to do with him, and immediately the cock crows. But the Bible tells us something else happens. As he's denying him, and as the cock crows, he turns, and the Bible says, him and Jesus' eyes meet. That's rough, right? You're in busted. I mean, just flat, cold, busted. There is so many emotions that come in to just being deer in the headlights, mouth still open, words still coming out, still in the eyes meet. You ever been talking about somebody and they're behind you? And you turn around and you're like, I mean, this is the ultimate, right? This is the ultimate, you're busted. Can you imagine after, after all they'd been through together and, and after how close they were and how much he had poured into it and, and Peter had confessed, I know who you are. You are the son of the most high God. You are the chosen servant. You are the Messiah. And, and Jesus says, flesh and blood, like you didn't learn this. This isn't an intellectual idea. You didn't learn this. But it was revealed to you. God had actually revealed who Jesus was to Peter. And then after all of that, after looking into the eyes of Jesus, flat out denying him before the people can, after him, watching him be beaten and whipped and nailed to a cross and it thrust down in the ground and jerking with all of his weight, ripping the flesh out of his body, watching your best, closest friend, your Savior, your Lord, your, your mentor, everything that you saw life to be, having that taken from you, but, but worse than that, knowing that just hours before or as he's going through this, you're denying him before his very face. Man, it'd be real easy to pick up a failure tag, right? I've lost it. I'm a loser. I'm a failure. Jesus thought I had potential. He had called me and chosen me. He had brought me into his group. He had trained me. He had walked with me. He had shown me everything. And I have not only not followed, but denied, cursed cursed his very name so Jesus dies and he's 
in the grave, and he's in the grave, and he's resurrected on the third day. And as he's resurrected, he shows himself to people. They say like over 500 people he reveals himself to. But as he's revealing himself to Peter, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a conversation that goes on that I want to talk to you about this morning, that I, I want you to get this morning. And this is in John chapter 21, and it starts in verse 15. It says, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus had been cooking them some, uh, some good scrambled eggs, bacon. No, Jesus was, ba- Jesus was anti-bacon. What? Everybody's got their thing, right? No. Just kidding. Y'all know Jesus was a Jew, right? Uh, okay, just making sure. Some people don't know. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now, this is a really interesting word because, because Jesus asked the word in, 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 uh, in the Greek word, agape. Do you agape me more than these guys? He's, he's there with the other apostles. Do you agape me more than them? Agape means to love as in a moral obligation or as in it's the right thing to do, right? Agape uh, is a, it's a, it's a very, uh, I think I would say like a head love, right? Do you agape me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Now, the word Peter uses is a word, it's phileo, okay? Phileo. And that word means to adore or to embrace in a, in a fondness, in a deep, affectionate, heartfelt kind of love. Jesus is like, do you love me with your head? And Peter's like, no, I, I love you with my heart. He said to him, then feed my lambs. And then Jesus said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you agape me? Now, I thought we just covered this, right? <laughs> the grave might have had something to do with you. Maybe your short-term memory, something. I don't know. Do you agape me? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I phileo you. You know I love you. I thought we just covered this. He's like, so now as Peter, I, I, the way I'm feeling Peter is he's just like, he don't think I love him. He knows I'm obligated to him as Messiah, but he doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't think I love him. He's asking me twice now. Do I agape him? And I've already told him, man, no, I'm heartfelt love and affection. Then he said to him a third time, son of John, do you phileo me? And I can't even imagine what goes through Peter right at this very moment. Like, like everything that's inside of him, all of his failures and everything that had been going on into him. And Peter was grieved because he had said to him a third time, Do you follow me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I follow you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And he goes on, and and you can read on. The important thing I want you to get here, though, is Peter's realization in having to confess with his mouth a third time. After confessing with his mouth three times the the, the night Jesus was crucified. Confessing with his mouth three times that I deny him. I don't know him. Now he confesses. And when he's asked to confess the third time, it breaks him. Everything comes rushing back. You're a loser. You're a failure. You ever have those times in your life when 
when you think, you know, it's over and it hadn't been good, but then all of a sudden everything comes rushing back at one time and points out all the flaws and all the mistakes and everything you had made. And maybe Jesus is saying something to Peter that he's not saying. And maybe Peter's hearing something from God that Jesus isn't even saying. Maybe, maybe Peter's coming to some, some ideas to deal with his own self about, hey, what is it that, that I can do to be made right with the Creator, with my, with my Master, with my, the one who's loved me and invested into me? What can I do? I, I phileo you. I, I do love you. I do love you. Do you really love me? I do love you. Do you really love me? Do you love me with all of your heart, with your whole being? Do you have affection? Are you fond of me? And I think, I think what happens when Peter finally comes to that grip is like, he realizes what has happened. But in this encounter right here, Jesus says, feed my sheep. Remember what I taught you to do? Remember what I taught you to do? I taught you to feed my sheep. I taught you how to go about my business. And what is Peter doing when Jesus finds him? He's going about his business. Peter went back to fishing, what he was doing before Jesus. He was back doing what he had been doing. Jesus says, why are you back? And in this conversation, you have to read between the lines. You have to know the context of it. Jesus is saying, do you love me? The question is like, why are you fishing? Have you quit on me? Have you quit on me? I know you denied me, but have you quit on me also? Who disqualified you? Did I disqualify you? Or did you quit on me? And, and I think what, what Jesus does in the reinstatement is he makes Peter come to the realization, hey, I really do love you. And what Jesus is trying to tell him is, I love you anyway. I've never stopped loving you. I've never quit on you. I've never given up on you. You are not what you think you are. You are not a loser. You are not a failure. Your life is not over. There's so much more that I have for you. It's not over. But Peter needed to realize, do I love you? And if I love you, then why am I continuing on this branded label of loser, of failure? Why am I stuck in the path I'm stuck in because I made some mistakes yesterday? His love for you doesn't change. He doesn't disqualify you. And what he wants you to know today, what he wants to ask you today is, do you love me? Not do you agape me, because we know that's the right answer in church. The right answer in church is, do you love Jesus? Well, yes, I agape you. We know the right answer. But the question Jesus is asking is, do you phileo me? Do you have a heartfelt affection for me? Then do what I do. Be who I've created you to be. Follow up with what I've started you walking in. You can't fail enough for him to not have an affectionate, passionate love for you. You can't mess up enough. You can't go too far. I've been in some places where I thought, surely this is too far. I'm, I'm too far gone. I know people in my life who thought I was too far gone. My parents never gave up on me. They loved me. They still saw the same potential in me as when I was young. No matter how many times I messed up, they saw what I could become. And they never lost hope and never lost faith in who I could become, that I could live up to that potential. Their love never gave up. Their love never quit. Their love never failed. And if they who are earthly people 
love me like that, then how much more does my Father in heaven love me who created me, who breathed life into me? How much more forgiveness does he extend to me? I can never go too far. I can never have done too much to not be reinstated, to not be restored. But what God's trying to ask you today is have you given up on you? Have you quit on you? Because he hasn't. No matter what label, no matter what brand you've taken on, he's still got your brand on top of all of that. Child of the Most High God. Jesus wants to reinstate you today. He wants to bring you back. Your name is Child of the Most High God and you have to come to that realization. Do you love me? Yeah, yeah, I love you. Do you love me? Yeah, I said I did. Do you love me? How many times is he going to have to ask you before you get what he's asking you? I haven't given up on you. Why have you given up on yourself? That's what he's asking you. I haven't quit on you. Why have you quit on you? Today, man, we can leave here childs, childs, children, children of the Most High God. No matter what happened yesterday, no matter what happened last week, no matter how bad you messed it up when you were 16 years old, you are a child of the Most High God. And you are an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. God loves you. God loves you. Don't give up on yourself.